today, it's my pleasure to introduce our colloquium speaker, Professor Masami Aochi from University of Tokyo and the Japanese National Observatory. He got his PhD in 2003 at University of Tokyo, and um, ever since then, he and his collaborators have been doing fantastic work on very distant galaxies, early large scale structure, young AGN, first with the industrial production of Lyman Alpha galaxies with Subaru telescope, now with JWST. So um, Masami, in addition to be phenomenally productive scientist, has won the Hubble Fellowship and Carnegie Fellowship and Japan Academy Medal Prize, Japan Society for Promotion of Science Prize, the Young Scientist Prize from Japan Minister of Education, the Yoshi Kuno Prize, you get the idea. So he'll be with us through Friday morning. If you haven't signed up yet to talk with him, please go to the website and do so. And without further ado. Yeah, all right. So yeah, thank you very much, George, and the other uh, many the other uh, Caltech colleagues for arranging the other uh, my colloquium talk and inviting me to here. And uh, today I talk about the other uh, early galaxies. Super uh, AGN and the uh, cosmic reionization uh, recently uncovered with JWST at, as well as Super Telescope, uh, highlighting the uh, the results uh, from the other uh, my group in Tokyo. And uh, actually, the other uh, my talk was originally scheduled in the uh, year two thousand, uh, year twenty twenty, and uh, but unfortunately, the other uh, due to the pandemic, I couldn't come. But finally, I, I made it. And uh, but uh, since then, the, uh, my talk title abstracts are totally, totally changed, and now totally, dif you know, different thing, you know, due to the uh, this, you know, gigantic telescope that was launched the other uh, one and a half year ago, JWST. So uh, JWST the other uh, revolutionized the other uh, early galaxy picture uh, in the uh, in the observations. As you know, that this is the, uh, the result of the uh, the GTO J's team released, and uh, the uh, the many you know redshift you know the uh, galaxies at redshift greater than ten and up to the uh, the redshift thirteen point two, uh, that shows the uh, the pretty red color due to the other uh, redshift and with the other uh, lime alpha break, and the, uh, that is shown in the other uh, spectro spectrum here, although it is very faint. And the other, you know, it is the other recently reported, and still, you know, there are many, you know, galaxy candidates whose redshifts are supposed to be around redshift 15 to 17. And the uh, one of the other, you know, the other interesting uh, reports uh, given by the other those, you know, JWST result uh, the other uh, last year, last summer, was the other, you know, people identified many bright, massive galaxies. And one great example is the uh, the CS 93316 reported by Donan et al. and many others. You know this shows the uh, the spectral energy distribution of the uh, this particular object and showing the uh, the nice you know break at around the uh, two micron. That is a uh, suggestive of the uh, the lime alpha break uh, uh, made of the uh, the neutral IGM at high redshift. And uh, so uh, you know, but uh, you know this. You know, if this object is at redshift six point, you know, this is a photometric redshift, so it is not confirmed at that time. And uh, but uh, you know, if this object is at redshift sixteen, you know, you know, according from the uh, this, uh, you know, lime alpha break, and then you know, the mass of the uh, this object is ten to the ninth solar mass in stellar mass, and the redshift sixteen. So this object, and uh, it is so so massive. And uh, if you compare with the other uh, structure formation model of the other uh, lambda CDM, you know, even if you assume that the hundred percent of the uh, the baryon is converted in stars, you cannot explain this object. So uh, you know, some people says that the other, uh, you know, this is the other uh, crisis of the other uh, lambda CDM. And uh, but uh, well, you know, recently, as many of you know, that the uh, this particular object was you know observed by spectroscopy with the other uh, uh, JWST NASPEC. And uh, the result is that uh, this is a spectrum of this the other, you know, 93316 object and uh, showing the other strong uh, H-alpha and oxygen-3 emission lines uh, with the other red, continu red continuum that is shown with the other red uh, line here. And uh, interestingly, the other 
strong H alpha and even stronger oxygen 3 pushes up the other uh, SED, and then it mimics the other uh, lime alpha break at around the uh, 16, at uh, the redshift 16. But in reality, you know, these you know, two lines indicate this object is the uh, redshift 4.9. So, uh, you know, there is no immediate uh, the crisis of the other uh, lambda CDM having this result. But uh, of course, you know, there are still re remain the, uh, some of the other uh, massive galaxy candidates. So maybe we should stay tuned. And, but uh, even though the other, we see the other many bright galaxies showing the other, you know, the other clear Lyme alpha break in spectra. So in other words, you know, sure confirmation of the uh, high register galaxies at register around 9 to 13. You know, the other uh, Yuichi Harikane in my group has compiled the other uh, data of the other uh, early release observations and the uh, e, e, uh, early, early release observations, early release the uh, survey and the uh, GO and DDT data of the other uh, uh, JWST. And uh, in total, we have the uh, 25 such bright galaxies. And this summarizes the other, uh, you know, the other uh, spectroscopically confirmed you know, galaxies uh, obtained, mostly obtained so far today, and uh, the field diamonds show the uh, spectroscopically confirmed, you know, galaxies, okay, with names. And the gray and the open red symbols indicate the other uh, photometrically selected uh, uh, galaxy candidates given by the HST and JWST. And, uh, you know, 93316 object is here, but, uh, you know, it turns out to be the other uh, 4.9, so it shows here with cross. So, also, we do not find the other uh, very, very bright, you know, galaxy at the red 16, but uh, still we see, you know, bright galaxy, as bright as the other, uh, the, you know, supposed to be the other uh, the, uh, 93316 object around here, but at the red 10 to 12 or so. So, uh, is this problem or not? So, of course, you know, it is not good to do the other uh, photometric study because the other, you know, you have a lot of contamination, so you don't know. But uh, at least you can do the other, uh, place the other uh, secure uh, lower limit of the other uh, luminosity function using just counting the number of galaxies for the other uh, survey volume. And this is a result of the reddish 9 and 12 uh, uh, luminosity function, but uh, most of them are, you know, lower limit because the other, uh, the other, you know, the other spectroscopic observations are not complete, okay? And then the other comparing with the other theoretical models, many, many theoretical models shown with the other blue curves, and the registered 9 is totally okay for the other given, you know, lower limit, but it is getting more difficult for the registered 12. And then we derive the other, uh, you know, cosmic star formation rate density, as a function of the redshift for the other these redshift 9 to 12 and giving, giving you know, just again the counting and also using the other UV luminosities of the other galaxies and uh, maximum survey volume and also the other no dust correction that provides the other secure more conservative lower limit. Still the other this, uh, so this is this shows the other these three you know conservative lower limits and the open circles, uh, open symbols indicate the previous photo Z results. And, uh, you know, from redshift 0 to 10, you know, such a, you know, the other, the other cosmic star formation rate measurements uh, can be explained by the other constant star formation efficiency model that is shown with the other, this, you know, blue curve. And uh, the, uh, our redshift 9 to 11 results are totally consistent with the other uh, uh, the constant star formation efficiency model that can be explained over redshift 0 to 10. But uh, beyond redshift 10, it looks like the other, there is a departure and uh, excess. And uh, it is quite positive. It is there still, you know, two sigma level excess, but uh, it is interesting. And uh, redshift 12, you know, the other galaxies may have the other, on average, higher, you know, the other star formation efficiency. And uh, this is again the other, you know, the other lower limit of the luminosity function comparing with the other uh, star form, you know, constant star formation rate models for the other uh, plugging in the other uh, mass functions of the dark matter halos for the other 2%, 5%, 15%.
And uh, most of the other redshift less than five, 10 galaxies have the other uh, star formation efficiency below the uh, 2%, and 2% uh, is the maximum. But uh, you know, this time, you know, red, you know, higher redshift and bright source uh, may have a problem, and uh, the other, you know, the star formation efficiency may be as high as the other 5%, or the other, uh, uh, or more. So uh, this may indicate that the other high Z galaxies beyond the redshift 10 would have the other significant uh, high star formation efficiency. And uh, out, but uh, you know, today I talked with the other uh, Phil Hopkins and uh, his student Shang, and uh, yeah, they also they argue that the other, there is a possibility that such a you know, bright uh, uh, galaxies may be you know, given by the other, uh, you know, the other star, starburst. Uh, in the other uh, inset of the starburst and uh, the such a galaxy that pushes this way and uh, by the uh, more than 1.5 magnitude and that may uh, explain such a you know, duty cycle of the other uh, starburst may explain this object but uh, still it is in interesting to know what's going on and uh, also the other possibilities are you know hidden AGN that I will talk later and also the other uh, top heavy IMF that pushes the other uh, uh, rest of frame UV uh, magnitudes that the other uh, JWST observe, and uh, then the other uh, for the given star formation rate, stellar mass, you know, U UV luminosity is too high, so uh, mimicking the uh, the high star forming gas, the high star formation rates and stellar mass. The other possibility that still just this is the other uh, scatter of the field to field variation, etc. So at least we should more the uh, spectroscopic you know sources to test the other uh, you know this number three case and the deeper spectroscopy for testing number one. Okay, and then the next question is uh, what's going on in the, uh, I have talked about the other uh, stars in the high redshift, but uh, what's going on the uh, interstellar medium in the galaxy. So this uh, image shows the other uh, uh, picture that was released uh, last July in the, in the you know, early release observation without you know, press release. And uh, as you, uh, some of you may aware that the other, you know, the spectrum of the other uh, JWST is great. And this shows the other spectrum of the other high redshift galaxy named ID4590 in SMAX cluster. And uh, this is a spectrum. And uh, actually, you know, the many of the galaxy astronomers, including myself, are so surprised to see this. And uh, many, you know, oxygen lines, hydrogen lines, and also, as well as the uh, faint oxygen 34363 line, that is the, uh, the gold stand, the uh, indicator of the, uh, the electron, temperature, electron temperature in the I ISM, and also the, uh, the gold standard for, for the metallicity. But uh, you know, it is very hard to detect uh, beyond redshift one or two, but it uh, looks like you know, this spectrum is the uh, dwarf galaxy at redshift zero, uh, observed with Keck, but you know, this is the uh, at redshift 8.5, so we are so surprised. And, uh, you know, due to the other uh, low and stable background, the other, uh, you can identify the other uh, faint uh, uh, lines of the high redshift galaxies in this way. So uh, it is great to the other, uh, look at the other uh, interstellar medium, uh, ISM property, uh, using the other, uh, those, you know, the uh, NASPEC uh, results. But, uh, you know, the other uh, here, Kimihiko Nakajima, uh, uh, look at the other, uh, you know, recent result of the other, uh, uh, you know, the ERO, the other uh, data that have the, there are four galaxies at redshift 6 to 8.5, and that are shown with the other uh, different colors, okay, but, uh, you know, different people measure the other uh, electron temperature based on the 4363 uh, emission line, and uh, then the other, uh, you know, you know, six groups show the other very different result. Of course, there is a strong correlation, but uh, you know, some show the other more than three sigma level difference differences, and uh, you know, especially the other some you know papers claim that the other you know, electron temperature is below uh, twenty five thousand K. That is you know the more than the stellar uh, heating limit, and uh, so that was the other you know you know, a lot of the other diversities, in the, even from the other uh, same data set, okay? And uh, using the other, uh, this, you know, these electron temperature measurements, you know, the other, uh, these six groups uh, show the other, uh, 
uh, mass metallicity relation, oxygen abundance as a function of the stellar mass, and uh, there are large scatter for the uh, same object. So we, I, you know, Kimihiko and uh, us have identified that this is a problematic and what's going on. And uh, so uh, we have revisited the, the, uh, the JWS NASPEC uh, data reduction, establishing the NASPEC analysis process, um, tried to the other uh, more precisely, and uh, precisely the other uh, subtracting the uh, residuals of the sky, and also the other uh, uh, carefully stacking the other uh, multiple frames uh, using the other uh, 2D on the 2D plane. Also, many of the other uh, studies are working on the other uh, 1D spectrum. Etc. Etc. Then the other we have obtained this result. This shows the other Balma decrement value h delta versus over h beta as a function of the other h gamma over h beta. And this line indicates the other Balma decrement with the other different uh, extinction curves, etc. So the uh, physically the other observational results should fall on this line. And uh, our results are shown with the other field four circles here, and they are, you know, the other uh, explained uh, within the other one sigma error, while the other, other, you know, studies do not, especially like this and this. So uh, we think that the other, we have established the other, you know, NASPEC analysis process nicely. And using this technique, we have derived the other oxygen abundance as a function of the stellar mass, that is so-called mass metallicity relation, and compare uh, these, uh, using the 135 star-forming galaxies at ratio 4 to 10, taken from the other uh, ELS, Sears survey of Finkelstein et al., Glass survey of the Trail et al., and the ERO and DET, etc. And uh, this shows the other uh, red small uh, uh, symbols indicates the uh, 135 star-forming galaxies at ratio 4 to 10. And the large star marks indicate the other, their average uh, for the given stellar masses, three, three st stellar mass beams. And we also plot the other, you know, recent uh, result uh, given by Carty et al. Uh, using the other 66 star forming galaxies at redshift 3 to 10, similar redshift. And we find the other nice agreement with the other Carty result in the other mass metal relation. And uh, if you compare uh, with the other uh, ratio zero and ratio two to three result uh, given by SDSS and Keck Mosfire for ratio two to three, looks like ratio four to ten average is, you know, similar but uh, a little bit low in oxygen abundance for a given uh, stellar mass, but uh, not large evolution we see. And this shows the other uh, breakdown of the other uh, our data for register four to six, six to eight, and beyond register eight. And uh, comparing with the other uh, numerical simulation predictions uh, of the other uh, many many uh, uh, studies, and uh, we look, you know, the, uh, including the one of the few Hopkins and the colleagues, and it looks like the other uh, our results are pretty, you know, the uh, similar to the other uh, theoretical predictions. And uh, interestingly, the other, you know, you know, not only the other mass metal mass metallicity relation, but uh, you know, there is the other uh, idea that the other galaxies are falling on the uh, same one plane of the other uh, mass metallicity star formation rate at the rate zero. That is so called the uh, star formation rate mass metallicity relation, and uh, uh, the the other uh, previous. 10 meter class telescopes have identified that the other uh, such a you know, star formation rate mass metal relation do not evolve up to register around three or so. Okay? And then we we you know extend this study beyond register four and four to ten, and this is a result. And uh, here we use the other uh, register zero uh, star formation metal relation uh, as the other uh, the Andrews and Martini uh, 2013 result as a reference, and this y-axis indicates the other uh, deviation from the uh, local relation, local baseline. Okay, and then you know many data points over 135 you know galaxies here, and the average points are shown here uh, the, with the other uh, star marks, and it looks like you know no evolution at least up to redshift eight, and uh, beyond the redshift eight. We do not find the other many, you know, excessive, you know, oxygen to uh, oxygen abundance ratio result 
but uh, you know it it look you know the uh, the small uh, oxygen abundance ratio for the galaxy that reached beyond beyond eight. So you know, but uh, of course you know, there is a suggestion that the, uh, there is a drop of the uh, the two three sigma level drop. But of course, the number of the other galaxies beyond the wedge eight is so limited. And uh, also, recently, the, uh, but if it is so, then the other uh, at wedge to zero to eight, there is no evolution. So uh, this indicates that the other, uh, you know, gas inflow, fresh gas inflow, and the uh, outflow with the uh, metal engine gas, that process uh, is in the equilibrium uh, at least wedge zero to eight. You know, it's surprising. It's uh, just a uh, Point, you know, a few hundred uh, mega years uh, since the Big Bang, but uh, then you know it may drop towards the uh, the first star formation with the uh, zero OH. So this is, this may be interesting, we thought, but uh, you know about two months late after the uh, we show uh, we post this result on the uh, the archive, uh, Cartier et al. You know, post their result using the 66 star forming galaxies at which is 3 to 10. And uh, then the result is the other, uh, this is the uh, the average result of the uh, same, you know, the deviation from the uh, star formation met mass metallic relation from that is 0 to 10 or so. Then the other, uh, the, the, these three large data points show the, uh, their average. But interestingly, they suggest that beyond the is 4, there is the, uh, the contiguous. Uh, Drop, you know, decrease in the uh, the, this star formation mass metallicity relation. So uh, you know, it, we find the other uh, this is a discrepancy, but uh, you know, it is not in reality because the other uh, Carty at all use the other uh, the for the as baseline. You know, they use the Carty 2020 result. Okay, why the other uh, we use the other uh, Andrews and Martini 2013. So different baseline relative zero baseline we used. So if we use the exactly the same baseline for the other uh, CAR-T 2020, our result also shows the other uh, contiguous, you know, decrease uh, from register four to ten, and uh, same as the other uh, CAR-T results that are shown with the other uh, uh, blue circles. So uh, you know the the difference between the other uh, hours and CAR-T at all is not the other uh, JWST measurements, but the difference ba baseline. So then, which is, so which is what baseline we should use? Uh, well, actually, we chose you know Andrews and Martini result because the other at redshift zero, zero, uh, they probe the other very low mass galaxies down to the other ten to the seven or eight that is corrected to be a star formation rate, and this you know the other gray shaded region is not you know observed in the local universe. While the other CAR T twenty twenty result you know explore, uh, you know, relatively massive end and uh, not covering the other, the other, most of the other uh, uh, low mass galaxy that uh, JWST observations cover. So uh, we think that the other, you know, the, our result uh, of the other Andrews Martini is the, uh, probably better, especially Redshift 8, it's the other coming around the other 10 to 8 here. So, uh, so so due to this result, probably you know the using Andrews and Martini is better, and uh, the other uh, dropping at around eight may be true, but of course you know we need the other uh, well the statistics law and also the other uh, the good register zero baseline is needed. So so to conclude the other uh, uh, star formation mass metallicity relation, you need the other uh, you know statistics more statistics and also the other uh, good register zero baseline. And uh, then I talk about the other, uh, some you know, nitrogen to oxygen abundance ratio thing. Actually, I omitted uh, uh, the following two slides, but uh, you know, having the discussion with George and also Kail today, you know, I changed my mind and uh, I swapped with some slides. Actually, you know, there is the interesting you know, galaxy e e e e that is named the GNZ11. Uh, that was originally identified by the, uh, the Hubble imaging and then subsequent Hubble grism spectroscopy and uh, by the, uh, given by the uh, Pascal Oesch uh, 2016. And uh, this is the other uh, GNZ11, you know, grism spectrum, okay, and in 2D and 1D this. 
and interestingly, uh, well, it's quite, you know, the signal to noise ratio is not good, large, but, uh, you know, there is the other, you know, significant, uh, you know, signal uh, at around the other uh, 1.5 micro and beyond. So, uh, you know, the uh, Pascal Oesh and the colleagues uh, conclude this object is at register to 11. And then this object was observed by the other uh, uh, JWST NASPEC with NASPEC, and this is the result. So this is amazing. So a great clear continuum with the other many faint emission lines. You know, we are so surprised. This is a 2D spectrum, and you can compare with Hubble, and it is amazing. I was so surprised to see. And uh, what is great of this object is that, may, as I said, you know, many faint emission lines are detected, nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, neon, and uh, hydrogen again, and so on. So, uh, well, you know, having this spectrum, you can investigate the other uh, abundance ratio, okay, not only the other uh, oxygen uh, that shows the uh, strong emission line. And uh, then the other uh, recent study uh, of the other uh, camera et al. and the Senchina et al. Uh, reports that the other uh, these, you know, uh, the nitrogen emission lines are too strong compared with the other uh, oxygen lines. And the other uh, suggested nitrogen to oxygen abundance ratio is as high as, uh, is about twice higher than the other uh, solar abundance ratio. So, uh, and also this you know, the other uh, high nitrogen abundance ratio is interesting. This is because as, you know, Cameron et al. and Senchina et al. you know, discuss, you know, if you compare the other uh, nitrogen to oxygen abundance ratio with the uh, other, many other, you know, local to high redshift uh, stars and the uh, galaxy, you know, ISM uh, measurements, it is quite high. And uh, you, as you can see here, this is the uh, nitrogen to oxygen abundance ratio as a function of the oxygen to hydrogen abundance ratio. And the green data points, green are uh, in the H2 region in Milky Way and red to zero, star form galaxies, extremely metal poor galaxies. You know, they are, and red, so as the other red to eight galaxy, ordinary galaxies. And uh, this is, you know, GMZ 11 is far beyond in the uh, nitrogen to oxygen abundance ratio. And uh, such a, uh, you know, abundant nitrogen can be made with the other, uh, the other AGB stars, as you know, but uh, still it is not enough, you know, if you compare with the other theoretical model of the other AGB stars. So then the other uh, popular, you know, the possibility is the other uh, wolf ray star, you know, wind that is uh, quite rich in nitrogen, but uh, not that rich in the other uh, uh, oxygen due to the other uh, outer part of the other, uh, 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 you know, the other uh, star, stellar gas is uh, ejected by the wind. So, but uh, the problem is that, you know, such a, you know, wolf ray star, uh, you know, wind is, you know, can numerate the uh, nitrogen more than the other uh, oxygen, but, uh, you know, the, uh, in a few mega year later, the wolf ray star usually, you know, core collapse and uh, produce a lot of the other uh, ejecta and uh, that is rich in oxygen and uh, this abundance ratio is falling, falling down to the other uh, this level, this dot, dot dash level. So here the other uh, one of the other uh, my student, Kuriya Watanabe, uh, looked at the other, uh, well, uh, many other possibilities. Well, not only the other AGBs, but uh, well, pair instability supernovae with the other uh, rotation, but uh, you know, and producing the more nitrogen by CNO cycle in the other, uh, uh, by, by the rich uh, uh, oxygen near the, you know, near the outer uh, stars, uh, still uh, the uh, layers, but uh, still, you know, the uh, pair instability supernova and the rotation doesn't make the other uh, rich nitrogen compared with the oxygen. So then the, uh, well, maybe, you know, we need to come back to the uh, wolf ray star possibility, but uh, the problem is the other uh, core core supernova, you know, go, you know, pushes down. So one possibility is that, you know, if those, you know, wolf ray stars directly collapse, you know, uh, uh, show, uh, produce the other uh, nitrogen rich winds, and then not the other uh, core collapse, but uh, the other uh, directly, directly collapse into the other uh, black hole, then the other, uh, you can keep the uh, high nitrogen to oxygen abundance ratio, something like this. 
So, and if you have the other 97 percent of the wall phase stars uh, uh, direct can d directly collapse, then the other you can produce the, uh, this high level of the other uh, nitrogen to oxygen abundance ratio. So, uh, and uh, Korea has uh, developed the other uh, chemical evolution model, uh, uh, assuming that the other uh, 120 to 25. Uh, solar mass wall phase stars directly collapse and for the other uh, about 97 percent then the other uh, this is the other uh, blue this blue line shows the other uh, the model and compared with the other uh, uh, GNZ 11 stellar age and nitrogen to oxygen abundance ratio it nicely explains the other uh, GNZ 11 and of course you know the difficult there are difficult you know, issues that the other, this is the other stellar mass is a moderately massive, 10 to the eighth solar mass, but uh, you know, this object have the other very high star formation rate as high as 20 solar mass per year. So if you assume it, the uh, such a, if you ha uh, assume the uh, constant star formation rate, you know, such a GNZ 11 can be produced within the other five, ta uh, five mega year or so around here. So uh, it makes sense. And also the other uh, abundant uh, oxygen abundance can be explained that the other uh, such a uh, you know the other uh, stellar wind is uh, confined within the other uh, star forming regions around the other uh, 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 wall phase stars then the other uh, such a uh, you know high oxygen abundance ratio can be possible so probably you know the you know wall phase stars with the other uh, mostly directly crops can be the other uh, one of the candidates of the uh, such explaining the uh, GNZ level the alternative scenario is the other, well, as suggested by the Carbonell, uh, Nigel, and Umeda, the uh, and colleagues, and uh, the other, you know, it are the supermassive stars with the mass of 10 to the fourth to 10 to the fifth solar mass. You know, it's a crazy high mass uh, stars, but uh, with the other violent, you know, explosion, the uh, when they explode, the other uh, they have the again the uh, great CNO cycle producing the nit a lot of nitrogen. And uh, so, uh, well, these two scenarios are possible. And uh, so, uh, you know, more tests and discussion than necessary for this interesting GNZ-11, uh, because uh, it may be related to the, uh, the globular cluster formation at high redshift. And uh, of course, you know, recent, you know, paper of the Maiolino is uh, quite stimulating about the possible AGN uh, uh, indication. Okay, then I, <laughs> step into the other uh, cosmic ionization that I want, really want to show here. And uh, yeah, first, yeah, let me the, uh, the introduce the other uh, cosmic ionization. Ah, why cosmic ionization? So uh, this is because the other uh, people believe that the other uh, early galaxies are s probably the sources of the other uh, cosmic ionization. This animation shows the other uh, classic uh, radiative transfer simulations. Uh, uh, reproducing the cosmic reionization with the other 50 megaparsec uh, uh, cubic box. Uh, there are the other galaxy formation and the galaxies are shown with the other uh, blue dots here. And then, you know, having the other massive stars in the galaxies and producing the other uh, ultraviolet light and making the other ionized bubbles uh, around the other galaxies. And their bubbles are getting larger. Uh, 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 by time, and finally the other uh, bubbles merge and uh, cosmic reionization complete. So this is a basic picture of the, uh, the cosmic reionization. However, you know, there are three major questions that the uh, observers should answer. So the uh, number one is the, uh, the cosmic reionization history, when the other uh, cosmic reionization started and completed. And uh, the second one is the other uh, fat you know, reionize the universe. Of course, you know, people believe the uh, the galaxies are major uh, sources of the cosmic reionization, but uh, still, you know, there are possibility that the uh, the, the AGN of oh, are you okay? Ah, yeah, okay. AGN can be the source of the reionization. And the topology is the other uh, now as I said, you know, bubbles are, you know, the uh, are growing and uh, makes the uh, the cosmic reionization complete. But uh, uh, it is not you know, the other sure that if the source of reionization is X-ray, so X-ray uh, given by the uh, AGN, then such an X-ray can penetrate to the other uh, cosmic void and once the other uh, gas hydrogen is ionized in the cosmic void, then the other, uh, you know, there is no recombination and the uh, cosmic reionization, uh, co you know, the proceed from such a cosmic void. 
So, and the state, status of the, uh, this you know, cosmic reionization study from observation is summarized this before JWST observations. This shows the other uh, neutral hydrogen fraction, okay, as a function of the redshift. And the higher redshift, you know, universe was completely you know, neutral, but uh, time passes by in the first one giga year of the cosmic history, you know, somehow the other uh, neutral hydrogen uh, fraction it gets around zero. So uh, this is the other, uh, the other, you know, the, and these, you know, uh, these two lines show the other late and the early cosmic reionization histories uh, suggested by the, uh, some models. And these dot, you know, the other symbols show the other uh, neutral hydrogen fraction measurement. Okay, and how you can measure is the other using the other very bright background source. It is very, you know, new, the other co uh, intergalactic medium is quite diffuse. So you need the other very bright background light uh, to probe the other state, you know, ionization status of the cosmic, uh, of the other intergalactic medium. And this shows the other quasar at the ratio 7.5 quasar spectrum at around the other Lyman alpha. And uh, compared with the other uh, template, you know, quasar uh, spectrum. And there is the other interesting, you know, absorption can be seen and uh, of the uh, Lyman alpha dumping ring uh, that should be given by the other neutral hydrogen in the other intergalactic medium. And uh, by this way, you can evaluate the other neutral hydrogen fraction and uh, so the other, this early result of the other uh, Edward Bernadotte indicates that the other at red is 7.5, the other neutral hydrogen fraction is the about 0.6, uh, 60%. And uh, in this way, you know, the other, you know, the other they, uh, measurement is given. But the problem is that, you know, first, you know, the number of the quasars are so limited. So you can just see the other, you know, limited number of the sight lines. That is not good because the, it's, the reionization is the other quite inhomogeneous uh, process. And also the beyond reach to eight, you know, there is the other large, uh, you know, the difference in the competing models, but uh, there are no data points. So here, uh, you know, JWST uh, data come. And uh, interestingly, you know, the other <laughs> galaxy continue are uh, uh, very faint but uh, due to the great sensitivity of JWST, you can uh, uh, accurately measure the other uh, galaxy continuum, uh, like shown here at register 11.6 or so, and uh, you can conduct the other uh, Lyman alpha dumping you know, profile fitting and with free parameter of the other uh, redshift that is given by this break, and also the other uh, neutral hydrogen fraction. And, uh, but I, you know, this is uh, one of the early results given by Curtis uh, Emma Curtis Lake, and uh, but uh, you know the problem is that yeah, there are two you know free parameters, so uh, you know there is a degeneracy, uh, but uh, you know the, this redshift can be not determined by the other uh, disk break at the same time, but if you use the other uh, emission lines in the different wavelengths, you can fix the other uh, redshift and you can uh, resolve the other uh, 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 this gener degeneracy. And, uh, but, uh, you know, there is another difficulty. If the other, you know, ionization bubble exists, then the other units to model the other uh, size of the ionized bubble that allow the uh, ionizing photons uh, can, uh, Lyman alpha photons can escape from the uh, distant galaxy. So this is the other, you know, the illustration of the uh, such an ionized bubble case. You know, if you have the other three physical megaparsec ionized bubble, then the other Lyman alpha photons can escape from the other bubble uh, up, up to the other some, you know, the other shorter wavelengths because the other the edge of the other ionized bubble is the other redshifted from the galaxy by the other Hubble expansion. So, uh, so such an effect exists, and also the uh, neutral hydrogen. Uh, you know, the dumping ring absorption is related to the other, uh, this regime for the 10% to 100% new hydrogen fraction and changing the shape. But a uh, good news is that you can uh, explore both the other uh, blue side of the other uh, Lyman alpha and the red side of the Lyman alpha having the other uh, uh, bubble information and the bubble plus uh, cosmic neutral hydrogen information. So in this way, you can resolve the other, uh, this degeneracy in theory. So uh, it is great if you have the other uh, redshift measurement and then you can try to resolve the other uh, degeneracy. 
uh, with the other uh, accurate data here. The other uh, Hiroya Umeda, uh, a student in the other uh, University of Tokyo, uh, look at the other uh, such a, uh, you know, the other uh, galaxy uh, spectra, and uh, especially the other uh, emission lines with the other uh, redshift determinations to, you know, the other uh, 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 reduce the number of the free parameter. And uh, then, you know, Hiroya uses uh, 26 spectra at radius 11, uh, 7 to 11.4, uh, taken from the uh, JWST programs of the ELS, DDT, and GO, and shown here, and with the other uh, redshift of the other uh, from the em emission line. And then, you know, he, uh, Hiroya has produced the uh, other four stacked spectra, bid by redshift. Then the result is this red, you know, blue, uh, orange green and uh, uh, purple uh, uh, lines indicate the uh, average of the red is 7.1, 7.5, 8.0, and 9.8 result. And interestingly, the, the, uh, the, the spectrum is getting, you know, from the, uh, the having this, you know, Lyman alpha and very steep cutoff, but uh, it's getting, you know, the, uh, the flutter. So this clearly say, show that the other, there is the uh, indication of the other uh, lime alpha dumping ring, stronger lime alpha dumping ring towards higher redshift. And uh, I was so surprised to see this uh, plot actually. And uh, clear evolution from, yeah, the other, you know, this high redshift. And uh, one funny, you know, the other uh, result is the other uh, redshift 7.1, you find the other uh, galaxies, lime alpha, stronger lime alpha emission line, but uh, the others are not. So, but uh, you know, this result reminds me the other uh, previous uh, results given by the Subaru. Uh, we looked at the other uh, Lyman alpha luminosity function from red to 5.7, 6.6, 7.0, .6, 7 and 7.3. It suddenly drops by order of magnitude from red to 7.0 to 7.3. And uh, same as the other uh, uh, Lyman alpha uh, luminosity, uh, uh, luminosity density from red to 7.0 to 7.3. So there is just, you know, the sudden drop. So we may find the, you may, we may see the, uh, the such a, uh, you know, su sudden drop of the, uh, the diamond alpha, uh, beyond the redshift to 2.7.2 or so. So uh, this is pretty consistent with the, uh, the previous result. And beyond the redshift 7.5 to around 10, 9.8, uh, then you can evaluate the other uh, 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 Lyman alpha uh, dumping ring absorption together with the other uh, ionized bubble size free parameter from red to 7.5 to 9.8. And uh, these are the uh, the best fit uh, result, having the other uh, two free parameters of the other uh, uh, bubble radius, typical uh, ra ionized bubble radius, and uh, also the other uh, XH1, the other uh, neutral hydrogen fraction. From high Z to low Z, obviously the other uh, ionized bubble size is, you know, small at the register around 10, you know, five megaparticles or so, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, no, maybe yeah, a few megaparticles or so, but, uh, you know, it's getting large. And uh, so it is pretty consistent with the other uh, cosmic reionization picture. And also the other uh, uh, XH1, neutral hydrogen fraction, is pretty close to one, but, uh, you know, it is less and finally it's flat. So uh, of course, you know, this has yeah, no constraint, but uh, yeah, there is a trend that the uh, neutral hydrogen fraction is getting, uh, uh, getting small towards the, uh, the lower redshift. And, uh, but uh, you know, there is no uh, you know, constraint uh, from the other, uh, uh, this dumping ring uh, absorption constraint. Uh, this is because unfortunately, you know, dumping ring absorption is too weak and it is not that sensitive. Uh, so it is not good, well, this technique is not good for the other uh, late stage of the uh, cosmic reionization because neutral hydrogen fraction is too low and show the other uh, dumping ring absorption feature in the spectra. So here we have the other uh, super hyper premium survey data uh, to probe the other uh, late epoch of the uh, cosmic reionization and as uh, uh, introduced by George, and uh, we are conducting the other, uh, 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 we have con you know, conducted the seven year long uh, super hyper premium imaging survey using the other narrowband and broadband imaging uh, from the uh, 2014 to up to 2021, and these are the sources. 
and, uh, of, and uh, then total of the uh, 20,000 diameter of emitters, uh, the other uh, observed over 25 square degree area. These are the photometrically selected objects, but are partly, well, only 170 sources are spectroscopically confirmed, but uh, you know, they show the other uh, pretty good, you know, the uh, selection uh, given by the other uh, narrowband uh, 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 excess. And uh, of course, you know, not all of the sources are spectroscopically confirmed, but uh, we will, you know, fully uh, spectroscopically confirmed, uh, uh, well, you know, removing the uh, contamination as well, but uh, uh, with the other uh, forthcoming uh, super prime focus spectrograph uh, spectroscopy uh, that I will talk at the end of my talk. And then using this, this data set, you know, from redshift 5.7 to 6, this is a uh, Lyman alpha, luminos alpha luminosity function of these sources from redshift 5.7 to 6.6. .6. It's evolving and it, the Lyman alpha luminosity is dimming, suggestive of the other uh, neutral hydrogen uh, uh, absorption by cosmic reionization. So as the other uh, autocorrelation uh, of the other uh, 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 Lyman alpha emitters and that the other uh, Lyman alpha emitter uh, uh, Clustering is enhanced by the other uh, ionized bubble and uh, the, uh, S, you know, the selective of the other uh, Lyman alpha emitters within the Lyman alpha bubbles. And we see the other uh, such a uh, possible excess of the other uh, neutral hydrogen uh, 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 bubble existence. And then using the data, we evaluate the other uh, Lyman alpha transmission of the other uh, IGM. And also the other from the other transmission, we evaluate the other uh, neutral hydrogen fraction for this you know, case. It's the other about the other 0.31 plus minus 0.1 or so. So uh, then we uh, show the other neutral hydrogen fraction as a function of the redshift and from given by the super for luminosity function and the uh, correlation function. These two different independent probes uh, 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 give the other very consistent result within the other one sigma level and uh, much better the constraints uh, given by the other JWST at, re at around red 7. And uh, although the other error birds are large, you know, JWST measurements now reach around red 10 and uh, clearly compared with super result, you know, the other red 10 neutral hydrogen is the other higher. And uh, this result is somewhere between the other late reionization and early reionization model. And then, you know, this indicates the other late or moderate rate reionization, not the extreme as the other previous Naidu and Finkelstein result. And then next question is that this neutral hydrogen evolution can be explained by the other, you know, given sources of reionization or galaxy luminosity function and also the other uh, cosmic microwave background result of the other electron uh, scattering. And here, you know, this result is compared with the other, uh, our previous, you know, Hubble uh, frontier field uh, UV luminosity function result from the uh, redshift seven to 10, uh, given by the other uh, Ishigake Eto, my former student Ishigake Eto. And then the result is shown with the other uh, uh, purple line uh, with the large you know, uncertainty. So uh, this uh, line is, given only by the other uh, galaxy UV luminosity function and with the free parameter of the uh, escape, you know, ionized photon uh, uh, escape fraction. And then the uh, best fit is the other uh, 70% and that look very uh, reasonable. And this is the uh, very consistent with the other uh, 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 electron, uh, Thomson scattering electrons, uh, electron, uh, Thomson scattering uh, 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 of the other uh, free electrons uh, in the uh, the CMB data of the Planck. So, uh, well, you know, this result is very consistent uh, with the associated reionization of the whole galaxy and also the other uh, XH1. So uh, then, you know, probably, you know, so uh, this result would indicate the moderate massive halos reionized universe because uh, it is the uh, late reionization. So, oh my God, I think, oh. I think we should go uh, quickly, maybe. So uh, then, what, is, what are the reionization sources? Then here is the uh, AGN that some of you are waiting. And uh, interestingly, the other uh, JWST in you know, early results show the uh, the, you know, due to the great sensitivity of the uh, the JWST NASPEC, you can identify the uh, the broad 
uh, line of the other uh, H alpha and H beta lines for redshift four to seven galaxies, while the, uh, there is no such a broad feature in the other uh, uh, forbidden line of the oxygen three that is indicative of the other uh, dense uh, broad line region produced the other uh, H alpha and H beta broad line component, uh, but not the other uh, O three. And using the other uh, and uh, so uh, th these are the given by the Obra et al. and Kosevsky et al., Larson et al., Harikane et al. And uh, now we have the uh, many, many you know, star-forming galaxies. We investigated the, uh, such a broad-line feature, and we have identified a total of 10 faint AGN harbored in the uh, star-forming galaxies that reach 4 to 7, shown here. And uh, they have the other uh, the high, and their you know, massy, uh, masses are Black hole masses are estimated from the other uh, line widths and the luminosity, and in, then the other uh, result is shown here with the red uh, uh, points. And their black hole masses are 10 to the 6 to 10 to the 8, in a relatively low mass, supermassive black hole, and uh, for and the stellar masses are uh, investigated. And then the other, uh, if you compare with the other uh, local relation of the other uh, black hole mass and stellar mass, you know it, it you know they they fall. Uh, you know, below the other uh, local relation and the higher black hole masses. And so it suggests that the other uh, fast black hole grows uh, at around, you know, at least at around Reggie 4 to 7. And uh, then coming back to the other uh, cosmic reionization, we find that the other uh, ordinary star forming, forming galaxies, we believed, but uh, about 5% of them uh, uh, harbor the uh, faint AGM, you know. Uh, showing the other uh, uh, broad component. So then, you know, if you use the other uh, this fraction, and then you know you can derive the other, uh, you know, the faint end of the other uh, luminosity function of the other uh, type one AGN, and that is shown with the other uh, this, you know, red uh, shaded region. Also, the other uh, uncertainty is extremely large. Okay, two orders of magnitude. Uh, due to the other uh, many many you know the other uh, correction factors uh, you need to apply, but uh, you know this result is very consistent with the other uh, previous XA result of the other uh, Jalongo, more recent result of the Jalongo result, and it looks like the other uh, quite abundant you know AGN existing at redshift four to seven. So then, you know the question is that how it is related to the other uh, sources of reionization. Okay, so these you know uh, red data points show the other uh, AGN, you know the other uh, cosmic photoionization rate of AGN at redshift four to seven derived from the other uh, uh, AGN luminosity function. Of course, there is a large uncertainty, and also here we uh, 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 assume the other uh, escape fraction of the other uh, thirty to eighty percent for such a faint AGN that is given by you know suggested by the other uh, previous study at redshift around three. And uh, we chose the other uh, fifty percent of the escape fraction, and including the other, uh, uh, you know, the errors for the, uh, this range of the escape fraction of the ionized photons. Of course, you know, the errors are so large, and if you compare the other uh, the, the, our result with the other uh, Lyman Alpha Forest results shown with the other uh, gray uh, 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 symbols, uh, th this representing the other uh, total uh, uh, cosmic photoionization. Uh, 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 rate, and then the uh, it looks like the other uh, you know AGN can explain you know about ten percent or a few percent of the other uh, cosmic you know, ionized photons, but are not as large as the uh, one hundred percent, and probably the other uh, it at, especially at register six, the other uh, uh, AGN contribution is of course existing. But uh, it is limited and no larger than the other fifty percent, even including the other large errors. So AGN contribution exists, but not very, not major contributors. And finally, so uh, before I conclude the other cosmic reionization thing, I have one uh, remark for the issue that is the other uh, ionized bubble size. As I said, you know, uh, we have derived the other uh, ionized, you know, typical ionized bubbles around the uh, such a you know bright. Uh, galaxies, and here is the other, you know, the, the three different redshifts of redshift 7.5 to the redshift 9.8, and as a function of the other neutral hydrogen fraction, okay, uh, given by the other JWST. And uh, yeah, I was surprised to see this 
this plot actually. So I suggested the other the, my the student, the other uh, Hiroya Umeda, and you should compare you know these you know exciting results with the other uh, you know previous you know far net and O uh, cosmic average uh, result, and then the result is uh, this you know black line. Uh, this is a theoretical analytic model uh, prediction. So then I was you know. <laughs> no, the other disappointed because the other this you know prediction is so different from the other our you know estimates of the other ionized bubble sizes that is quite fantastic but <laughs> so different and then we thought the other these you know the data points are from the other very bright massive objects so you know they they should have the other large uh, ionized bubble size sizes so then why don't you you know bring you know, this, the other, uh, the kind of three sigma limit of the other, uh, their, you know, the other uh, iron bubble size distribution uh, in the far net and O result, but then the other uh, result is shown here, so it is not enough, high enough. So what you need is the about 20 times larger iron bubble size uh, for the other uh, measurements, uh, estimates. So uh, yeah, I was so uh, the uh, disappointed and uh, something missing in our analysis. But uh, two weeks ago, there was the other uh, 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 cosmic reionization meeting in Israel, and then I showed this slide. And then the other uh, Anhatta uh, from the other uh, Copenhagen uh, uh, told me that the other uh, well, you know, recently they uh, uh, predicted you know, about two two months ago they have you know predicted the other uh, size of the ionized bubbles around the other uh, massive bright sources and shown with the other uh, black line and the uh, dotted line for the other uh, rapid reionization and gradual reionization scenarios. And then, you know, it is far beyond the other uh, cosmic average and but, uh, you know, it is quite large uh, due to the other uh, very, you know, bright sources and also the other uh, ionized bubbles are merging for around the uh, such, uh, you know, bright sources. So that makes the about 20 times larger than the cosmic average. So uh, we are, I, I, I was so surprised and uh, uh, you know, relieved that the, uh, we see that there is a very good agreement with the other neutral hydrogen fraction uh, predicted by uh, uh, ionized bubble sites predicted by the other simulations and our observations. Okay, and uh, so we see the uh, sorry, so we see the other uh, quite consistent, you know, result. Uh, between the new, you know neutral hydrogen, uh, the other uh, the other cosmic <laughs> uh, numerical simulation and our uh, observations under the assumption of the other uh, ionized bubbles exist and growing, so they agree each other. So this may suggest that the other uh, the topology of the other uh, ionized bubbles, uh, like the other uh, you know ionizing process having the ionized bubble, uh, the something like you know the other pretty the same as the other we believe, like, you know, the other topology, the uh, making a bubble and uh, la getting large and merge the other bubbles and then reanimation complete. So such a, uh, you know, scenario, uh, the other, uh, our observational result and uh, theoretical predictions are quite consistent. So uh, maybe, you know, the ionized bubble topology, uh, maybe the other uh, true from the other uh, results. So this is the final slide. So uh, before I close the other my talk, the other maybe I should touch the other you know quickly the other future study. So uh, one of the other great things that we can do uh, from the observations, uh, not only the JWS is great, but something others is the other super prime focus spectrograph that the other uh, Caltech is involved in this project, and uh, the other uh, this you know spectrograph uh, will uh, is. Uh, mounted on the uh, prime focus of the, uh, the Subaru 8 meter telescope and using the uh, 2,400 fibers and uh, covering the other uh, about 1.3 uh, square degrees, uh, no, 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 the other uh, 1.3 degree diameter and uh, covering the 0.4 to 1.3 micron. And now the, as I said, Lyme alpha emitters, uh, you know, poorly, you know, the uh, spectroscopically followed up, unfortunately, due to the other, uh, you know, the uh, large number of the other uh, 10,000 sources or so. But, uh, you know, using this uh, uh, spectrograph, we can, you know, completely the other uh, spectroscopically observe the other, uh, those galaxies, or about 10,000 galaxies at which six to seven over the uh, 25 square degrees found by the super hyper cam imaging survey. 
And these are very, you know, unique and uh, uh, important because the other, uh, there are the many efforts of the other 21 centimeter observations at, for the cosmic reionization uh, using the other in, in the uh, square kilometer array SKA projects and many others, as well as the other many intensity mapping study at around Redshift 6 to 7. So, uh, you know, one of the other difficulty for the other 21 centimeter observations are the uh, stu uh, observations that the, the foreground strong emission. But, uh, you know, if you have the other uh, surely spectroscopically confirmed sources, large number of sources, you can spatially cross correlate, spatially and uh, spatially cross correlate, and uh, you can retrieve the other uh, real. Uh, a signal at the red at the at the red shift six to seven epoch of reionization. So uh, you know one of the other theoretical uh, forecast using the uh, super PFS and the coming uh, square kilometer array. This shows the other you know cross power spectrum uh, absolute value of the cross power spectrum of the 21 centimeter radial signal and the other uh, the uh, Lyman parameters given by the uh, super prime fo fo focus spectrograph. And uh, this shows the other, this is the PFS observational limit and the uh, two models of the different uh, ep uh, neutral hydrogen fractions at redshift 6.6. .6. And due to, thanks to the other great, uh, you know, redshift determination and removing the other contamination in the uh, uh, photometric uh, uh, sample, uh, you can clearly uh, uh, detect the other positive correlation in a small scale, okay, it's K. So small scale uh, between the H1 the galaxy, in other words, you know, H1 gas in the galaxy. But, uh, you know, in a, in a large scale, you know, there is the other, you, you can expect the other anti-correlation between galaxies and ionized bubbles because the other galaxies, you know, the other uh, galaxies makes the other ionized bubble. So uh, they should spatially anti-correlate. So, so there is the other, oh, this dot, dotted line is the negative correlation, but as shown, uh, with the positive value due to the other, this opposite value here. So, uh, you know, having this transition uh, scale, you know, this is the other uh, ionized bubble size, it's typical ionized bubble size at reg 3.6. In this way, you know, we can prove the other uh, ionized bubble uh, with a totally independent manner, uh, complementing the other uh, JW st studies that can only uh, prove the other uh, uh, ionized bubbles only around the uh, bright galaxies. So, in this way, the other more, you know, the ionization, cosmic reionization topologies can be uh, uh, investigated. And, uh, well, the good news is that Super PFS has already seen the engineer first light in 2022, uh, last year, and now commissioning observations going. And we are planning to start the other such a PFS uh, spectroscopic survey uh, uh, next year. So please stay tuned. So this concludes the other, my uh, 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 colloquium talk. So thank you very much. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. So not only G and Z11, but ah, uh, okay. That I think it's important. Yeah, actually, you know, we also looked for the uh, such a nitrogen uh, rich object. And uh, actually, one of the, my students, um, uh, Yuki Sobe, identifies the other uh, one secure nitrogen excess object at redshift nine or so. So not only this object, but uh, also the other object. Yes, I think it is very important. Yes. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. That's that's an important point. Actually, what we did was no dust extinction. Okay. 
apply because we want to have the other uh, conservative lower limit. Okay, if you apply, you know, dust extinction correction, then it goes up. So we didn't, you know, apply. No, I, we, we just, you know, you know, the integrate only the sources detected or confirmed by spectroscopy. We never did the other, oh, this one, okay, this one, okay. Integrated down to the other, this one is the other, you know, the gray, gray symbols. Gray symbols did the other minus 18 magnitude. But uh, these, you know, the lower limits are given just the other counting, the other very bright sources. So in other words, even for the other, you know, no dust extinction correction for the secure lower limit, and also survey volume is another problem, right? So uh, you don't know the survey volume, so uh, you, know, you can uh, 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 you know, the other use the secure survey volume and uh, with no you know, effective volume collection that boosted up the other lower limit. So we didn't do that. So these are the sec very secure lower limit. Uh, sorry, you made the other uh, constant star formation if you say you can talk. Okay. So, what's your uh, question again? Okay, yes. Mm. Yeah. It, it is. So that, that's why, you know, it is very difficult to explain. And it should be the higher star formation if it has metals, you know, dust for the other lower redshift. But, you know, for high redshift, you know, you know, we expect less star formation efficiency. But, yeah, this one. So uh, it is very interesting point. And, uh, yeah, it is really one uh, we want to know. And recently, the other, well, Abhishek Dekel and the colleagues, you know, the, you know, uh, the, uh, predict that the other, some, you know, efficient star formation may happen for the other, such a, you know, early epoch of the universe. And uh, also, the uh, some, you know, the other, uh, you know, early star formation, the other uh, simulations with the very high, uh, very high, the other uh, resolution spatial resolution and the uh, mass resolution without suggesting the very high star formation efficiency that may be the other, you know, due to the other uh, very dense uh, dark matter halo and possibly follow, followed by the other gas density. So it is very puzzling. Thank you.